going to go ahead and, uh, and start meditation. So let's take a moment and be still in peace, silence and contentment with the oneness of our being and that is everything. There is nothing outside of us for we are everything. Everything is a part of us and we are a part of everything. And so we sit in peace and harmonious silence in the truth of our oneness and beingness. Allow yourself to be still. Allow yourself to be one with the silence. Allow yourself to rest in the peace and serenity of Holy Spirit. Allow yourself to be still and know that we are God. So let us relax in that stillness, that beingness, that oneness. Let us abide in the perfect silence with Holy Spirit. Allow yourself to move further within the expanse that is you. Expansiveness that is larger than the universe itself. For you are endless, infinite being of infinite creativity and expression. Allow yourself to be still. Be in this space for a few moments longer. As we now prepare to return
to the locality of where our bodies lay, our bodies sit in silence, allow your consciousness to return. And as you are returning, let us say our opening prayer. I am here only to be truly helpful. And him who sent me. I'm here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do. Or he who sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever he wishes. I am content to be wherever he wishes. Knowing he goes there with me. Knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed. I will be healed. As I will be healed. Me to heal. As I let him teach me to heal. As I let him teach me to heal. Amen. All right. So we are here. At the beginning of the unhealed healer. So Ziva, would you like to begin reading? Okay. The ego's plan for forgiveness is far more widely used than God's than God's. This is because it is undertaken by unhealed healers, healers, and is therefore of the ego. Let us consider the unhealed healer more carefully now. By definition, he is trying to give what he has not received. If an unhealed healer is a theologian, for example, he may begin with the premise, I'm a miserable sinner, and so are you. If he is a psychotherapist, he is more likely to start with the equally incredible belief that attack is real for both himself and the patient. But that is, but that it does not matter for either of them. Okay. Oh, what do you think about that, Ziva? Pardon? What do you think about about that? Oh, well, first of all, um, the, the ego, um, you know, has uh, plans to to heal and. Um, most people are following those plans of the ego and um, uh, because, you know, th those of us who are in our ego um, uh, use um, getting directions from the ego, uh, like theologians or psychotherapists, um, they'll be because we're not uh, healed ourselves, we cannot heal. How can someone who's not healed themselves be able to heal others? Mm -hmm. Or at least, um, or at least we, you know, when if you're not fully healed yourself, you're not able to experience. Um, results that you can depend on, that you can count on. Um, there are some times that the unhealed healer can help. Um, there are times where, you know, I, I look at myself as an unhealed healer because I'm still healing, you know? There's still a healing going on with me. So in that respect, in that regards, I'm the unhealed healer. In that respect, in that regards, passage is referring to me um, because I'm constantly learning and growing and yes there's a healing process that's going on um, 
but I've still been able to help, you know, some, you know, someone as far as giving them perhaps uh, a fresh perspective or a fresh new way of looking at things that uh, may have been, you know, it may have been of some use or some benefit. Um, but the bottom line is, you know, the unhealed healer, you know, I believe is, 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 is kind of referring to me. Oh, um, I, I don't know, because if you, um, if you have been healing, I suppose you have, that, that came from your uh, Christ, your, uh, you know, inner truth, all the healings. It, and so that's why you can, you were able to, to help others heal. What do you think? Um, what do I think? Um, I'm going to answer that. Yeah. Yeah, because Claudia is about to say something. So, but I'm going to answer that in just a second. So hold that thought. But go ahead, Claudia. Sorry. Well, I'm thinking that this sound is also my thing. Like they spiritualize evil. You know, so sometimes, you know, I mean, we are all in the process of healing. We are, I'm thinking that we are. Um, at some point, one hundred percent healed. But there is, you know, some leaders or whatever that can proclaim, we can proclaim to be, you know, like the healers. Sometimes we put projections on, on the people, like, uh, and those those are yeah, you know, so confused. And and yes, yeah, so we are not gonna give something that we cannot give something that we don't have or that we are not ready for. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree. And um, just to answer in more depth your question, Aziba, is that I, I have a, I have a, you know, I am at times coming from my Christ. Um, but because I'm not completely healed, it's not sustainable. It, it doesn't last for extended periods. I, I believe that as I, as I constantly begin to grow and learn and heal and integrate with my Christ nature, there's longer sustainability. There's more sustainability as far as being able to heal myself um, in order to be able to perhaps help someone. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Um, yeah. I, have, I know I have some, you know, some, some ways to go. It's not in any way to say anything negative about myself. I don't take a negative connotation from being an unhealed healer. I, when I say unhealed, it doesn't mean that there's not been any healing. It just means that I'm not complete, uh, completely healed yet. You know, it doesn't mean that, there, that a lot of healing hasn't taken place um, over the years. You know, because I can't say that because then I wouldn't be telling the truth because there has been a lot of healing that has taken place over the years. But am I, am I healed? Always in evolution while we are here. Right, right. I mean, maybe we should look at uh, some more um, subsequent uh, paragraphs and see and, and, and explore that and, and, and see what we find out. What do you think, Zeba? Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, um, so I'll go ahead and read the next paragraph. Nice little short paragraph. I have repeatedly said that beliefs of the ego cannot be shared. And this is why they are unreal. How then can uncovering them make them real? Every healer who searches, every healer who searches fantasies for truth must be unhealed because he does not know where to look for truth and therefore does not have the answer to the problem of healing. Hmm. What did you all get from that paragraph? I'm thinking 
You were saying something? I was just telling you to talk louder so people can hear. Okay. So what do you think about that, Zeba? Uh, I, let me see. Um, I think uh, it's referring to um, when Jesus talks about uncovering them, make them real, like, you know, what they do, uh, uh, the psychotherapists and, and the theologians, what they do is to dig into the, the shadow side of human beings, you know, tell me what you have done and why and what, what do you think this is about, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, they make, make it real. Mm -hmm. And when they, after they make it real, then they're trying to make it unreal um, and say, okay, so you're, you're healed. So this is not happening. You are not crazy or this craziness is not, you know, uh, uh, is not having any effects on you. So, uh, and, and at the beginning, also he says um, um, that beliefs of the ego cannot be shared, um, and this is why they are not; they are unreal. Mm -hmm. So, um, first of all, they cannot be shared and they are not real. But by the way uh, we try, the unhealed healers try to heal others is, is by sharing and by, you know, making it real and then, you know, trying to make it unreal. And this is really not helping, not mm -hmm. working. You know, and I agree. I agree. I agree with you. And I also think that when you are attempting to look at things from a skewed perspective, a perspective that that is affected by erroneous thoughts. And then you want to come from a place, come from a place as far as actually trying to help someone when you're not seeing clearly. Um, how can the blind lead the blind anywhere? You know what I mean, Zeba? You know, if you're, if you yeah, exactly. Yeah, if your perspective, you know, if you have all these different like expectations and we've talked about these in some of our previous uh, sessions as far as like you know where you know you want things the way you want them and, and all sorts of different things so you have you have uh, agendas and and expectations and all these different things how can you come from a place of openness and acceptance to hear someone you know, completely free of agendas and stuff like that. When you have all of this in you, how can you actually help them? So in other words, how can the blind lead the blind? Exactly. So well put. Yeah. I mean, perhaps there are some times where your perspective isn't so skewed, where you might actually see something a little bit you know, a little bit clear or something like that. It's not so skewed where you just, you know, you, you, where you just can't see anything. Maybe you can see a little something, you know, or whatever. And so maybe you can help a little bit, you know, but for the most part, you don't have 2020 vision. Right. So you can't, you're not seeing things clearly yourself. Well, and I think that actually the only truth is doing if you're seeing that the people is going through a something, mm -hmm. yeah, an illusion too. Yeah. So somehow, so I think that I was thinking from that point of view, mm -hmm. so we're getting a heal. 
know, that's showing true. touching like your know, heart. Yeah. Instead of you know, like like holding the the truth. And Zebra, you said something about that when you're actually trying to heal the illusion. When you're actually looking at the illusion, you were just saying that. Maybe you didn't say it in those exact words, Eva, but you said that. You know, when you're looking at the stuff trying to make it real, and then you're trying to come, you know, you're trying to heal that, you know, when really, of course, in miracles just says, just know the truth of the, of the brother and sister. Just know their truth, period. There's nothing else for you to do. In other words, you know, Jesus the Christ had double vision. Okay, so he had the vision so he could still see the illusion, so he could so he could help his brothers and sisters. He did, he was able to see the illusion. So he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, oblivious to the illusion, because he wouldn't have been a good teacher for us if he was oblivious to the illusion. So there was a part of him that was able to see the illusion, but he could also see truth. So he had double vision. Does that make sense? Yes. If all you're seeing, if all you're seeing is the illusion. And you're trying to heal from the standpoint of the illusion, you're not recognizing truth, which that's the real place of healing. Mm -hmm. Just affirming the truth. Hi, Mary. Right. The Tyre paragraph, uh -huh. you know, like be a theologian or be a, a somehow you have some leadership over, over that person, or that person can see you in a pedestal. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have the truth, but they are human too, you know, and sometimes, you know, they are leaders that are radical, you know, religious leaders, um, whatever, psychotherapists, that they make creation for you, or maybe met, you know, like they are really, like you tell me this, you know, it's like a yes, yes, so, because, they are also likely exactly. to get into their own projections. Exactly. So they are seeing you something like that is on them. Exactly. And I have had those situations. Yes, I have, I've experienced I have. that as well. And who is who has just joined us? So we've got Oscar and we've got who, who's over here? Mary. Hi, Mary. Can hey, you? how's everybody? Doing, doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. My apologies for being late. Oh, no, you are perfect. You are right on time. So don't even worry about it. You know, the time that you came was the time that you were supposed to. Okay. I know that's right. Okay, then. All right. I've received. And Oscar, how are you tonight, brother? Good. All right. Good to be here. Good to see you. Good to have you here. We are discussing paragraph two of chapter nine, um, uh, the unhealed healer, or uh, chapter nine, um, part uh, part uh, five, the unhealed healer. So chapter nine is, what is chapter nine? Uh, chapter nine, chapter nine is page 11. The acceptance of the at one minute, and part five, the unhealed healer. Paragraph two. Is everybody able to find it? I'm looking for my book. Okay. Oh, here it is. All right. Okay. So, uh, Dad, you wanna you wanna read paragraph? Par oh, you were next. I'm sorry. Yeah, here, here. Well, I read paragraph three. Sorry. <laughs> I'm about to bite my head off. <laughs> I'm going to bite my head off. Go ahead. Go ahead, There is an advantage to bringing nightmares to awareness, but only to teach that they are not real and that anything they contain is meaningless. The unhealed healer can do this because he doesn't believe it. All unhealed healers follow the ego's plan for forgiveness in one form or another. If they are theologians, they are likely to condemn themselves, teach condemnation, and advocate a fearful solution. Projecting condemnation onto God, they make him appear retaliative mm -hmm. and fear. In retribution, what they have done is merely to identify with the ego 
and by perceiving what it does, condemn themselves because of this confusion. It is understandable that there have been revolts against this concept, but to revolt against it is still to believe in it. All right, okay. Well, what do you all think about that paragraph there? Yep. Projecting condemnation onto God, they make him appear retaliative and fear his retribution. How many times have we heard people project uh, 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 a fearful identity uh, on God? I don't know about I have. You know, I definitely have. So. Yeah, like a punishing God, you know. Right, right, right. But what it's actually saying is they're really just they're really just seeing their own their own projection. And so the way that we see things, that's the way that we see God. Is what it's saying. But it's also saying a whole lot more. So what do you all think about this paragraph? There's a lot on this paragraph. I think that even by kind of by a little confused, not confused, but it says like even by talking about the ego, thinking about the ego, mm -hmm. we condemn. Oh, Eve, I got a question about the last sentence. I don't understand this. Okay. It's understandable that there are revolts against this concept, but to revolt against it is to still believe in it. Hold on. That seems to be contradictory to me. All right. Let's see. Hold on. All right. What are you talking about, David? I don't understand paragraph seven, where it says, it is understandable that there have been revolts against this concept, but to revolt against it is still to believe in it. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back in order for, for so we can, they can discuss what the concept is. So you would probably want to go to six. You know, what they have done is merely to identify with the ego and by perceiving what it does, condemn themselves because of this confusion. It is understandable that there have been revolts against this concept, but to revolt against it is still to believe in it. So, you know, yeah, if you, yes, yes. Because if something is not real, again, you have to look at it from that standpoint. Um, if it's not real, there's nothing to revolt against. If the concepts of the ego are not real, there's nothing, there's nothing to revolt against. Now we believe it. But if you believe it, believe that. then, but then it yeah. says if you revolt against it, yeah, because you, believe you, it. you still believe in it. I don't know. That ain't clicking in my head. Okay. All right. Because it's not, because if it's not real, it's not, it's not, it, it does, it, there's nothing to revolt against if it's not real. If, if, if it's not real, there's, there's nothing to remember. Like, like, for example, like the, I, I'm, I'm going to go completely different with this analogy. Um, when you have a dream and you see a, fly, a firefly turn into a dragon, you're not going to think anything strange about that in a dream, right? It's not real. You wake up. I went through then. Okay. I mean, a dream. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to get you on the standpoint of what's real and what's not real by, by using the dream as an analogy. Okay. You know, and when you wake up, you realize it's a dream. But in the dream, maybe you ran from the dragon or something like that. So you're actually, it's actually real to you. So when you're revolting against something, it's it's real to you. It's all. I'm just trying to describe that so you can kind of understand. So it's saying to revolt against something is still to believe. 
whether you agree with it or not, you still believe in it, or else it wouldn't be nothing, there would be nothing to revolt against. You don't have to agree with it, but if it actually gives you a charge there and causes problem, causes a discontent, or removes you from peace, then that's that's your you're, you're investing belief into that. Does that make sense? Okay. Anybody else want to talk about this paragraph? Ziba, Mary, Oscar, anybody? I'm good, I don't have anything to add. Okay. Are you looking over there, Ziba? I don't have anything specific to say. Okay. I mean, is it all self-explanatory or do we do you want to take you all do we all want to take some a little bit more time on it? It's okay. It's clear to me. Okay. All right. All right. So everybody ready to move on? Yes. All right. Dad, you want to? Okay. Read paragraph four. Some newer forms of the ego's plan are as unhelpful as the older ones because form does not matter and the content does not change. In one of the newer forms, for example, a psychotherapist may interpret the ego's symbols in a nightmare and then use them to prove that the nightmare is real. Having made it real, <clears throat> he then attempts to dispel its effects by depreciating the importance of the dreamer. This would be a healing approach if the dreamer were also identified as unreal. Yet if the dreamer is equated with the mind, the mind's corrective power through the Holy Spirit is denied. This is a contradiction even in the ego's terms and one which is usually one which it usually notes, even in its confusion. Okay. All right. Well, this what comes to me right here, Claudia, is kind of what you were talking about when you were saying when people are seeing from, you know, through their own projections and then trying to prescribe antidotes to their own projections. And when you're actually trying to pres prescribe antidotes to projections, and let's say this person is a therapist, and you're actually coming to this therapist, but this therapist can't see past their own projections and they're prescribing antidotes to what they're seeing um, with their projections. It's, it's, it's sounding like, 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 like gibberish to you. It's sounding like, uh, like, you know, some, so a foreign language. What, what, what are you talking about? And I mean, I tell you something more personal. You have seen this thing when I say, you know, you're talking to you. You know what I mean? When, it, when we start like giving advice, what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are talking to ourselves. We are making a, a, a prediction. So mm -hmm. we should do what actually what I need to do. Mm -hmm. you know, kind of like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why, in, 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 in my opinion, it's really best to kind of focus on your own healing, um, which is why it does say in the Course in Miracles that, you know, the best thing to do, the best way to serve your brother or sister is just to see the light in them. It's just to see the light in them. Another thing, don't make nobody dependable, okay? It comes, you know. 
you proclaim to be the healer, that's an evil thing too, you know, and mm -hmm. you keep making people dependent in mm -hmm. here. And the course says that you can even make, you know, don't get dependent on the course of healing. Mm -hmm. Don't don't get dependent yeah. on the course of miracles. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a lot of stuff to chew on here. Um, some newer forms of the ego's plan are as unhelpful as the older ones because form does not matter and the content has not changed. Hmm. Well, the ego has a prescription for everything. I can't tell you what to do. Yeah, yeah. You want you, you want you want to know what to do? I I got I got you covered. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and that also happen and it's very dangerous on the spiritual level, on mm -hmm. the therapist level. Like, what do you think that you have the solution for everything? You know, for mm -hmm. everybody to tell them. So, and, and, and sometimes people subscribe and there is a lot of like false gurus or whatever you want to call them. Like mm -hmm. it is just, you know, spiritual life's evil. And what's, the one, what's one of the main reasons why, what's one of the main reasons why, um, of course, and miracles kind of speaks out against trying to heal somebody. What's what's one of the main things? What happened? I mean, kind of based on what we're talking about, what's one of the one of the main reasons why? Main reasons why what? Like a person, why the best thing to do is just see the light in somebody. Why is that? First of all, because the thing doesn't exist. It's part of the the illusion. Mm -hmm. Whatever that we are seeing right there, you know, it's an illusion. You can you can try to wake up your your brother or sister. At the same time, sometimes you have just to even do nothing but just to hold the truth. Okay. And you want to say, "I hold the light for you," because you're gonna to come to the, to your own realization at mm -hmm. some point mm -hmm. of who you are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and the reason why that is is because we have as human beings we have agendas we have things that we want to see we have uh what we would want to see happen and you know it is too it is too enticing to be from that standpoint of what we would have happened as opposed to coming from a standpoint of complete and total acceptance as far as meeting this person exactly where they are, you know, and not having any judgments against them where they are, not looking at things from, our, from the standpoint of our own journey, because it's not meant to look at anyone else's journey through the eyes of your own journey. So it's, it, it makes it really complicated for you to really even think or have enough arrogance to believe that you can actually, that you can actually heal somebody when you have all of this to contend with. You have your own journey to contend with. You have your own agendas to contend with. You have your own biases to contend with. You have your own belief systems to contend with. All sorts of things. And so it prevents you from being able to see clearly which is really what it actually requires. It requires clear sightedness to actually be able to, if you really want to serve in that capacity. You know what? Whatever we are seeing is also part of our perception. It's exactly. part of our projection. Exactly. So whatever we are seeing on the other people's situation, or whoever mm -hmm. that comes and tells you, you know, their problems or something. Mm -hmm. That way also sometimes it's good just to ask for the healing in your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. in my mind, what is the healing? Of Question that I'm seeing, I'm seeing that this person is having problems with the sister, husband, whatever, but what it is in me, so this is what I need to heal, yeah. this is what I'm seeing. All right, what is it is that's within me? I need to heal, whatever yeah. that I need to heal from that situation, mm -hmm. from this level, from me. Absolutely. Me. Absolutely. 
That's mine. Yeah. So what you guys think about that? Um, I think uh, the real healing um, begins at the uh, level of spirit, not at the level of, you know, uh, so um, that's why uh, when we, you know, when someone is trying to heal another person um, and they see them as already healed, as God created them, that's uh, at the level of the spirit. Mm -hmm. You just give uh, energy to that idea and that's going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, Absolutely. Whereas in this level, in the level of human being, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really work uh, because yeah. we, the ego doesn't have the real solution, doesn't know what to do, how to heal. Exactly. Because we have so many biases and agendas and and perceptions and backstories. We all have different backstories. So in other words, on the level of form, there's a story. The story is not the truth of who you are, okay? So the best thing to do is just basically just recognize the truth of who someone is. You know, that's, that's basically all you can do. And just let spirit, let spirit prescribe the antidotes. You just see their truth. You just see who they really are. You just help hold them, help them hold the high watch as far as who they really are in truth. You see that for them. And that's the best thing that you could actually do for anyone. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to tell them, I see the truth for you. You don't have to do any of that. Just see it right there in your mind. You see the truth for them. And you know when they're in that, when they're in that jungle and they can't see, when they're surrounded by trees and stuff like they can't see, or they're in that in they're in, the, in that deep water and they, and 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 they're, they're thrashing about and things like that, and they have fearful images they have to deal with and stuff like that. They can't think clearly, they can't see clearly, so they need you to just see the best in them without judgment, without you know, wanting to look at things from your own eyes and your own viewpoints and things like that and, and, and from your own backstories and your own biases and things like that. Just see the truth of who they are and let spirit, which, which binds us all, prescribe the antidote, which is like a long way of what you just now said, Ziba, when you said when you're on the level of form or you're in the human being form, it's impossible. And you were saying anything has to be done by spirit. So I was agreeing with you, Z. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oscar, do you have? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to throw in the subtlety there. Yeah. Oh, I can hear myself echo. This is interesting. Because I think, uh, oh man. All right, I'll, I'll just say it. I think some people take this to the extreme. And I've noticed, uh, stop Teddy. My dog keep on asking is asking for attention over here, <clears throat> and they. Uh, so, so I agree with what you're saying, uh, but some people have a tendency to say, "Well, that means I do nothing," or if I, an opportunity comes right like in my front doorstep, I don't do anything. Right? Uh, <laughs> some people at some other level want you to be their healer. So they're, they're doing the healing, right? They're, they're the ones that are being healed, but they chose to give something to you by you healing them, if that makes sense. So their gift to you was that ability to heal them or that feeling that you got when you heal them, which is the same feeling that you get when you feed someone who's needy. It's the same feeling when you say someone or say something kind to someone on a daily basis, mm -hmm. they're giving you, by you helping them, they're giving you something back. And that in itself is a miracle as well. 
So I know some, I know most everyone has felt that when uh, they uh, supposedly healed someone, but really it was them that was doing the healing and you receive something right back. So it's, it's, uh, I, I agree with what you're saying that you got to see people for what they are, which is whole and perfect. Totally agree with that. But th there's a, there's a slight subtlety and I just wanted to, uh, I know that that is a form and it's a way of receiving and giving or doing them simultaneously because they're the same. Uh, but it's, uh, I didn't want people here to think that, Hey, that doesn't mean that you can't help someone when they show up, because in that sense, when you're helping someone, they chose to give that to you. That's something that they wanted to give to you. Uh, Oscar, uh, may, I, may I say something? Yes, of course. Um, uh, I would say uh, I agree with you in general, um, but it's also important to remember um, we can help each other only when we're guided. Like when we say things or do things uh, uh, from a place where we're guided by the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we can make mistakes and we almost always make mistakes when the ego is, is our teacher. Just wanted to add that. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. What I'm just saying is there's a specific situation that uh, I want to make sure people don't miss out on. Mm -hmm. And that, that situation is solely that the other individual is giving you the opportunity to, to feel that way, to receive. Mm -hmm. So it's really, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's a miracle. That, that, that's what he talks about. It's the, uh, sure, you're guided by the Holy Spirit when you do it, but the way I see it is that was something that someone else gave you. Uh, when you help them, that's, someone that, that's something that they gave you. So just don't be fearful of uh, something just coming right up to your doorstep and just an opportunity showing up there and saying, oh, this is awesome. Uh, I don't know. I just wanted to throw out that subtlety. I appreciate that. And, um, I think we're all on the same page, by the I way. I think so. we all are, are, are all are too. And, and let us always remember that even when you are, say, quote unquote, helping someone, you're also helping yourself. Yes, yes, yes. That's the key point. Because they're, and they're letting is, you help you. That's the beautiful part. Yeah, there, there really is no separation. There's only a seeming separation. There's only a seeming you're over there. That is the, that is the biggest illusion in this world, that, that, that you're over there and I'm over, over here. Um, and even if you choose to focus your consciousness on healing yourself because you're seeing your brother or sister in a certain way, that still positively impacts them as you look to heal it within you. There is a subsequent healing when you are focusing on healing within yourself because I'm seeing you in this, I'm seeing that, you know, you're, whatever it is that I'm seeing, okay? Um, and so what is it within me that I'm seeing this? You know, let me just heal that within me because we project a lot of things. And we really don't, because of all of our biases and because of our agendas and because of our, our concepts of self and because of all of, and our backstories and all of these other different things, okay? It is, it is exceedingly difficult to see a person exactly as they are. So we're really only seeing our projections. We're seeing our idea of that person. We're not really seeing that person exactly for who they really are. You know, we're really just seeing our idea of them. And so you can actually help someone by healing that idea that you have of them within you. Actually, even Yeah, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. And this is good. This is real good. Hey, thank, thank, thank you, Oscar. I, I, I appreciate that. I like how we're bouncing stuff off of each other. And uh, how you doing over there, Mary? 
I'm enjoying the conversation. I know I'm just listening, but um, I'll get more involved. As uh, long as you, as long as you're enjoying it, as long as I'm, you... I'm enjoying it. It, it is vibrating with me. So thank you all. All right. Okay. Beautiful. Does anybody have anything else they wish to discuss on that paragraph there? Yeah, which one we just finished? Yeah. I, I think we just finished paragraph four, huh? No. Three? No, what was the last part? Oh, it is understandable that there have been votes against. But you vote against it, it's still to believe in. I had a question about that. We resolved that. Okay. What paragraph did we just finish reading, guys? Uh, excuse I thought your me. dad was right. It was four. That's what I thought. Yeah, for we read for um, I I'm still not ready to move on from this. Okay. Um, All right. So I um so I would like to underscore number five or or maybe before that number four. Okay. Yeah, starting from number four, going all the way to up to number six. All right, well, if I go to number four, he's talking about this will be a healing of the dreamer were also identified as unreal. I kind of have to go back a little bit further because it's building up on something. I'm going to go a little bit. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Okay, so you're saying in one of the newer forms, for example, a psychotherapist may interpret the ego that's starting at two, the ego's symbols in a nightmare and then use them to prove that the nightmare is real, okay? Having it real, then attempts to dispel its effects by depreciating the importance of the dreamer. Okay, or the, you know, the person in the illusion. Um, this be a healing approach if the dreamer were also identified as unreal. Yet, if the dreamer is equated with the mind, the mind's corrective power through the Holy Spirit is denied. Because if you're denying, if you're denying, you know, the actual, because the dreamer is just the mind anyway. Okay, that's just the mind. The mind is the dream. All right. So if the dreamer is equated with the mind, the mind's corrective power through the Holy Spirit is denied. If you're saying that 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 it's all unreal, including the mind. And it's saying basically here that the mind has a corrective measure um, that regardless of what it is that needs to heal, the mind is going to continue to attract more of what needs to heal to your life until you heal it. So that's kind of what it means by the mind's corrective power to the Holy Spirit is denied. I said, this is a contradiction even if the egos even in the ego's terms, and one which is usually, it usually notes even in confusion, or one which it usually notes even in its confusion. Thank you. Anytime, have you all experienced that? I know I have. It seems like when there are things within me that need to heal, it's like I get more and more. Have, has anybody ever had like, for example, where you were always attracting the same type of people in your life? Um, maybe it was the same type of relationship. Um, maybe it was uh, maybe it was somebody that uh, passed away and there was something that you didn't heal with them. And then next thing you know, lo and behold, someone else comes along after this person has made their transition, you're going through the same thing with them, okay? 
So that is what it means by the mind's corrective uh, power to basically heal what it is that's with the, through the Holy Spirit, what, is it, what it is that needs to be healed. If you don't heal it, you're going to continue to experience that same type of, that same dead end relationship, that same type of job, that same type of boss, that same, those same types of friends or whatever, until you heal what it is that's within you that needs to be healed. is going on why you know why i still get the same type of situation all the time i'm tired of this and and because there's something that you haven't healed there's something that you have to heal and if you haven't healed it holy spirit holy spirit is going to continue to bring or it's going to continue to bring forth more of what it is that needs to be healed until you heal it can anybody can anybody identify with what i'm saying <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's they they act it out. Absolutely. They lovingly act it out for you. Exactly. They will act it out for you, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You don't change the script. You want to thing. Yep. Absolutely. Um, yeah. We're gonna go ahead and take a little eight minute break. Mary, we're going to take a little eight-minute break and go use the restroom or something like that or whatever, and we'll be back. Okay. Yeah, we'll check my ends. Working. Okay. I got my number and everything is good. Take care of what you got to do with Keevan. We'll see the situation. Take care. This phone's not working at all now, right? Huh? This phone's not working at all now. No. It, it, it didn't take his number. So he never did take, text you the information you needed? I hear you, Dad. He didn't text you the information you needed? He did, but uh, they couldn't take it. They didn't know what was going on, so. You know, we gotta see. What? I'm good. What? Yes, no cold. Hey, let me go turn the uh front us off.
All right. Huh? Oh, it's just six minutes? Okay, we got two more minutes? Okay. Mm, 
Don't worry about it. I'm not You're locked in this thing. Yeah, I hear you. That's why, that's why I got this other email. I'm just not meant to get it. If I was meant to have it, I would have got it. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'm not meant to get it. All right, so we're about to start back up again. We got to start. We got to start. <clears throat> I'm sure you sent it. It's just not coming to me, so I'm not meant to have it. And it's a dream I'm not meant to have, my brother's book. All right. So we are now on paragraph five. Oscar, do you want to read? Sure. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you fine. All right. You so said you paragraph should... five, what chapter? Um, we are on the Unhealed Healing, chapter nine, part five, the Unhealed Healer. I don't know when you want me to start. 172. We're ready. Okay. If the way to counteract fear is to reduce the importance of the mind, how can this build ego strength? Such evident inconsistencies account for why no one has really explained what happens in psychotherapy. Nothing really does. Nothing real has happened to the unhealed healer, and he must learn from his own teaching. The ego will always seek to get something from the situation. The unhealed healer, therefore, does not know how to give and consequently cannot share. He cannot correct because he is not working correctively. He believes that it is up to him to teach the patient what is real, although he does not know it himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just I just kind of expounds on what we were talking about, you know. You know, you say that. I mean, you know, healing cannot be performed when you're in the illusion. Basically, is, is what it's saying. You know, when you're clearly seeing the illusion, how can healing, you know, result from that? You're in the illusion too. What do you think, Oscar? No, I, I agree with you. Just, uh, so, so yeah, no, you're right. You're saying you cannot heal. Uh, basically, you cannot heal if you don't see them for who they are. And if you don't recognize that the healing doesn't come from the ego that you associate with yourself and uh, or ever the, whoever the other person is, that uh, I don't know. I'm kind of rambling on here. Uh, I, I hear, I hear you. I mean, I hear you saying. I mean, well, you know, I, I get what, what what you're saying. I mean, from the level of the the illusion, healing isn't even possible if you if you're actually seeing things through the eyes from the level of the illusion. So, so it's if you're healing with judgment. There you, That's really what it is. There, there it is. You're healing with judgments, with bias, with agendas, with a backstory, you know, um, all these different things. Um, how can there be, really be healing? Mm -hmm. When you have to contend with all of these different things. And how can you really see this person for who they are? How can you really see this person um without judgment from a place of total acceptance I, I, when you have the judgment that's what i meant to say was from a place of total acceptance yeah. have judgment and bias and agendas and what you want and, and the things that you would or how you want them to be and stuff like that how can how can there be any healing Yeah, I think you just need trust that, uh, I guess they use the term Holy Spirit in here. Well, God will, will handle the situation. That's where your faith should be. 
Exactly. Once you have that faith, that's when the healing comes. That's exactly. when the, I guess in here they call it healing. In other chapters, they call it the miracle, the salvation. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how many different ways they say the same thing in the book, mm -hmm. the same uh, adjective to describe it. But uh, yeah, I think we're on the same page. Yeah, we are on the same page. You know, I mean, and if you feel any type of way, and so these are some indicators that you probably shouldn't even attempt to help somebody else. If you feel any kind of way, if you feel invested, you shouldn't even attempt to. If you feel judgmental, you shouldn't even try to attempt to. If you feel that you like you you want you have an agenda, like you this is what you want to see, you probably shouldn't even do it. So if you have any of those things in you. And you're gonna sit up here and try to help somebody, you probably should just, you know, just sit back and you know, just let Holy Spirit do his thing. Does that make sense, Mary? It does, absolutely. I agree a hundred percent. And I think also that that we never really get there. We never really get there because um, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. And so we keep peeling the layers off the onion. Where's the where that you're talking about? Just say the future. Yeah. I'm not falling. I'm sorry. Could you explain it a little more? <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So there's never anywhere else to be but right here, right now. And mm -hmm. as just like when I got on the call and I was running late and I wanted to, you know, like restore my integrity and let you all know that that was what I wanted to do was be here on time and not be an interruption and all of that. And I wasn't really present at that moment. It wasn't until you said everything happens right now. Mm -hmm. This is the right time. It's no accidents. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Did that make sense? That makes perfect sense. I missed sense. part of it, but I heard right now. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I, I think I agree. That I think makes, I agree that makes, with what you're saying now. <laughs> yeah. That makes perfect sense, Mary. That makes perfect sense. So in other words, if I, let's just go back to that event, because that's a perfect teaching example. So do you mind if I go back to that event? Okay. So if I went back, back to that event and I have this agenda of mine, where I wanted everybody to be on on time, okay? I want everybody to get on at seven o'clock, okay? So then I'm not gonna be looking at it from a place of acceptance as far as like everything that's happened is perfect. So, you know, there's no need or whatever. I'm, at, I'm, I'm probably gonna be a little, a little upset. <laughs> probably gonna be like, yeah, it's about time you got here, you know, something like that. I mean, so, because I have an agenda. I have an expectation, you know, and so it's it's exceedingly difficult to have any type of benefit to your brother or sister when you can't get past your own agendas and expectations. And those aren't the only two things. That's just two things. We also have backstories. OK, like, you know you know, what's my background and things like that and what have I gone through in my life and stuff like that, the things that have kind of molded me, it's all a story. So we have all of those different things that we have to contend with. It is exceedingly difficult to, to see things clearly 
when you have glasses that that are skewed that have like all kind of mud on them and stuff like that that you're in the process of cleaning you're in the process of cleaning these lenses you know so if you can't see clearly if you don't have 2020 vision how are you going to be of benefit to anybody no try to clean your glasses so that you can see clearly how about that you know and just know in your mind and you don't even need to be able to see clearly for this just know in your mind that this person is perfect just as they are period, and recognize the truth of who they are, period. You don't need to be able to see clearly for that. You don't need to be able to see clearly for that. Use your imagination. You don't need to understand their story. You don't need to understand, you don't need to get it. You don't need to, because you're not going to get it. You're not gonna get it as far as why they're going through what they're going on, what they're journey going through, or what their journey is all about. You're not gonna get, you're not gonna be able to see their journey clearly from the eyes of your journey. So the best thing that you can do, because you actually do them a disservice to try to to fit them within the confines of your understandings. Because your understandings are surrounded by biases and all sorts of things. You are, you're not going to be able to understand anything from all these, from all those different things, from that difference, from all these different things that, that can come in, in into play when we're just talking about your biases and your this, and your that. And how are you going to get to know about this other person when basically your idea of them is skewed? So the best thing that you can do is what A Course in Miracles says. The best thing you can do is just basically just see the truth in them. You don't have to understand. You don't have to understand what they're going through or why they're going through what they're going through or whatever it is that they're experiencing, just, you know, have compassion. Maybe you might be able to get a little bit of the, the gist of it, you know, but like, you know something, I've, I've gone through those same types of situations and have some compassion. You know, I get it. You know, I've had bad days like that too. I remember when something like that happened to me and just have compassion for them. And you can do so much more for yourself and for them by just having compassion and seeing the light than you could ever by trying to be some sort of healing agent. And is that, does that make any sense? It does. It does. And you know, I'm, I'm a nurse, so, and I hear the word healer and I don't consider myself to be a healer. However, I do feel like I make a difference. Mm -hmm. That I was put here on the planet to facilitate, if you will, because I consider myself a catalyst mm -hmm. for life transformation and not just my life, because we all are one. So. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know why, Mary, so I have always seen that about the nurses, that they have this great opportunity to bring light, you know, like uh, more than... Yes, yes, yes. You know, just by your presence or your loving presence can change a whole, you know, the whole perspective of the patient. To have more faith and, and be kind of attuned to his loving presence. So I think it's a great opportunity for you to enlighten, to expand your, your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, this is really getting, this has really been a good conversation. Excellent conversation. And thank you. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate uh, your insights and your contributions just now. Um, who's, who's, who's next to read? Hey, you want to read? Well, we're on six. I want to read. Okay. What then should happen when God said that there'd be light? It was light. Can you find light by analyzing darkness? <laughs> As the psychotherapist does, or like the theologian, by acknowledging darkness in yourself and looking for a distant light to remove it. Yeah. While emphasizing 
a distance. Oh, let me read that again. Okay. So it says here, and you find light by analyzing darkness as a psychotherapist does, or like the theologian, by acknowledging darkness in yourself and looking for a distant light to remove it. While emphasizing the distance. Healing is not mysterious. Nothing will change unless it is understood. Since light is understanding, a miserable sinner cannot be healed without magic, nor can an unimportant mind esteem used without magic. Esteem itself. Or esteem itself without magic. Okay. A miserable sinner cannot be healed without magic, nor can an unimportant mind esteem itself without magic. Okay. okay. What do y'all think about that? I think that light is the synonymous of love. God's presence itself, you know, the, this world I start with, you know, the life being what it is, just one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we are all the light, and, and it's true, you know, so darkness can dissipate light, but light can dissipate that. And you can see, you know, the photons of light can you know, be seen, even if the extension of the darkness is, is huge. I see the little match in your face. From that, and also look at the whole universe. Yep. I want you all to correlate what it's actually saying. So, healing is not mysterious, nothing will change unless it is understood, since light is understanding. A miserable sinner cannot be healed. See, that's a, that's a state of consciousness, okay? That's a state of consciousness, all right? It's a judgment. Right, nor can an unimportant mind, that's another state of consciousness, esteem, esteem itself. So, you know, if you got, just in case you got, you know, just in case, we, we, we didn't, right, right, right. But sometimes we can get kind of confused with what, uh, with what you know, with how A Course in Miracles reads. Um, yes, I'm saying? Well, when you say that it's a state of consciousness, it's the realization that we are the life, you know, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Can you find light by analyzing darkness mm -hmm. as the psychotherapist does or like the theologian by acknowledging darkness in yourself and looking for a distant light to remove it while emphasizing the distance? When we see God out of us, mm -hmm. you know, like, and yeah, right, uh, uh, that is the thinking about what do you think about that, Ziva? Um, about what? Which part? I mean, just about the paragraph. What do you think in general? So, seems like uh, Jesus is actually. Um, uh, talking about the importance of light, mm -hmm. and in other words, understanding um, in healing and what we do in the form in the ego is to analyze the darkness, trying to find uh, healing or trying to find light. Mm -hmm. So, 
that's where the problem is. And also, um, I like that he's referring to magic mm -hmm. um, here because, uh, you know, people are taking all these pills to recover from um, um, uh, um, diseases of the mind, if I can use that word, phrase, or, you know, to, to heal themselves, to be who they are. But does that work? No, it's, it's magic. And then, so the problem is, you know, all these unhealed healers uh, are trying to use, you know, uh, magic on miserable sinners and unimportant mind, which is both, you know, um, um, The, the way ego looks at the mind and the, the way, you know, ego looks as, looks at uh, God's innocent children as, as sinners, miserable sinners. So, um, and then they, they're trying to use magic to heal these so-called miserable sinners and unimportant mind. And I think it's also saying that how you see yourself, that is how you are, okay? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you well. I said, I think it's also saying that how you see yourself, that's exactly how you are. Okay, uh -huh. so it's saying nothing will change unless it is understood, since light is understanding. A miserable sinner cannot be healed without, mm -hmm. as without magic. In other words, if you consider yourself a miserable sinner, that is how you consider yourself. That is your truth at that point. So no, nothing is going to change at that point. So he's going back to saying nothing will change unless it is understood. Unless it is understood that you're not a miserable sinner. All right. Okay. Um, unless it is understood yes. that, that no, you are not unimportant. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah. You everything. God has already given you everything. So, but how you perceive yourself, those thoughts are going to create your reality. So yeah, if you perceive yourself as a miserable sinner, your own thoughts are continuing to create that type of reality. And so nothing will change unless it is understood. That's kind of, I'm just kind of wanting to reemphasize that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, however, um uh, you know, I, I think uh, he's referring to these uh, uh, perceptions uh, with regards to theologians and, uh, and therapists. Mm -hmm. that's, that's true. Because he again, re yeah, he's not talking about one seeing themselves as miserable sinners and unimportant mind, although that that happens and that's possible. Mm -hmm. But in here, I think he's actually talking about those unhealed healers who are trying to heal others uh, by way of, you know, um, labeling people as that, as those. As a miserable, as a miserable sinner. Miserable sinners. Uh -huh and an unimportant mind and then trying to heal them. Looking at the illusion and trying to heal yeah. the illusion. Exactly. Okay. 
Yeah. 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 I was also thinking, like, if we say that the problem is that the healers do, so we are going, you know, outside. You know, so why the problem is of the healers, and the healers want to do this magic, and the healers and the healers. So I think at some point we also have to be to take what it is in us of the healers. So otherwise, so this is kind of combining what you say, Stephen, that we have to know what is our truth. And, the, and so then Siva was saying that they are talking not exactly about ourselves, but the healers. Mm -hmm. So, well, we cannot stay on the healers outside because otherwise the chapter is, you know, I see, I, I see exactly what you're saying. Us anything. Yeah. So I think we have to flip flop because we are in risk to be the healers too, or be the false healers, or like the healers. So, I think we need to see also that perspective from within. And, and, from, and from that standpoint, I can see all. Of what we were all saying. I can definitely see what Ziva is saying from that standpoint. I can see what I'm saying and I can see what you're saying. But you know, what's really cool is that in A Course in Miracles is that we can get different perspectives and get a more universal perspective and see how on different levels, A Course in Miracles is referring to certain things like on, on right here and there and things like that from different points of views. So. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Zeba. Oscar, Thank you. you guys have anything else you want to, you wanted to add? Did you all want to, want to pitch in? No, no, no. I think you guys are uh, really on par. That's nothing I disagree with from what we okay. said. Right. Um, Mary, did you find your book? Yes, I have it. All right, perfect. You feel like reading the next paragraph? Okay, let's see. Is that seven? Yes. Both forms of the ego's approach then must arrive and impass. The characteristic impossible situation to which the ego always leads. It may help someone to point out where he is heading, but the point is lost unless he is also helped to change his direction. The unhealed healer cannot do this for him since he cannot do it for himself. The only meaningful contribution the healer can make is to present an example of one who direction, whose direction has been changed for him and who no longer believes in nightmares of any kind. The light in his mind will therefore answer the questioner, who must decide with God that there is light because he sees it. And by his acknowledgement, the healer knows it is there. That is how perception ultimately is translated into knowledge. The miracle worker begins by perceiving light and translates his perception into sureness by continually extending it and accepting its acknowledgement. Its effects assure him it is there. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. What y'all think of that? While she was reading it, I could see kind of like I feel it, feel it inside of us, you know, like the ego thing. Mm -hmm. And then when we start being a miracle worker and we start bringing the light, mm -hmm. we can dissipate. Like that, you know, a healer, healer that my all carry within us, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at this over again. Mm -hmm.
the only meaningful contribution the healer can make is to present an example of one whose direction has been changed for him, who no longer believes in nightmares of any kind. Yeah, so when somebody goes to you mm -hmm. and make them laugh, yeah. mm -hmm. so anybody want to expound on that? This is a, this is a real good one right here. Oscar, Mary, Zeba. Okay, I'll say something. Okay. <clears throat> so um, we know that uh, the ego's um, uh, understanding or the ego's interpretation of the situation. Uh, leads to an impossible situation, um, you know, as we saw in section six. And why? And why so, is that? What's the simple uh, reason? I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry. Because uh, of the, I think uh, where it says nothing will change unless it is understood, since light is understanding. Exactly. And a miserable sinner cannot be healed without magic, and, you know. Exactly, exactly. And by acknowledging darkness, okay, how can there be any healing by acknowledging the darkness? By yeah. acknowledging the illusion, how can there be any healing? There can be no healing. Right. It's really... So well, I mean, it, it's a, it's a, it's saying the same thing in each paragraph, but he kind of breaks it down, really breaks right. it down in this paragraph, you know, mm -hmm. it's saying mm -hmm. the same thing. It's saying, you know, because like he was saying, and you were just now quoting the previous paragraph, you know, um, yeah. But at the same time, he really breaks it down by talking about what the healer does. The healer looks at the light. That is the only truth. That is the only truth. Right. Yeah, so in number two, it says it may help someone to point out. Is someone saying something? No, no, we're listening. Oh, I'm hearing my echo then. Okay. Um, so it says in number two uh, from section seven, it may help someone to point out where he is heading, but the point is lost unless he is also helped to change his direction. So what the unhealed healers do sometimes is like telling us, oh, you know, uh, what you're thinking, your thinking process is, is miserable it's it's bad or what you're doing or how you're living is mm -hmm. not right exactly you have a problem okay but and the this direction you're going is not a good you know path but then exactly. they're not telling us what to do exactly, exactly. how to yeah exactly i mean you hit you hit you hit the nail on the head right there <laughs> and essentially, it's like the blind leading the blind. Mm -hmm. So the unhealed healer who is acknowledging the darkness again, okay, who is not looking at the light, not looking at, you know, that this is not the truth of my brother. My brother or sister is just going through something. Like we all go through something, okay? I mean, that's part of the, that, that, 
you know, that's part of our, our journey. Our journey is accentuated with going through things. Okay, that's how we grow. That's how we evolve. So to go on going through things as somehow like bad or anything other than, hey, this is just part of your journey, but I know who you really are. I know who you are. And right now, I understand that you may not know who you are because you know something, when I'm going through things, I may not know who I am. So I definitely have compassion. I get it. I get it. I am with you, but I know who you are. Do you all, do you all hear that? Yes. That's, and I'm just giving an example. You know, and then not not, not 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 talking about the illusion, not going into the illusion and, and talking about you know what's going on and analyzing it and all that other stuff, psychoanalyzing it and all this and that. No, I, I get it. An illusion is an illusion is an illusion, you know. But I know who you are. You know, I, I understand what you're going through. Trust me, because I I go through it too. I get it. I get it, and I am here for you. But I know who you are. You don't have to say that to them, but you just say it in your have it in your mind and hold that light for them in your mind. And you can do more for that person with, with, with doing something like that than you ever could do as far as wanting to go into this whole psychoanalysis, as far as trying to analyze the illusion, trying to analyze the dream. Right, and trying to be the therapist and stuff like that. You know, you know. Is, 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 is that making any sense, Oscar? Yeah, I agree with you. If you yeah, have I time, uh, I, I, on today's lesson, it really goes along with what we're reading. I can read two or three paragraphs if you guys will get a kick out of that. Do mm -hmm. you want me to or not? It's up to you guys. You got two or three, two, two, three paragraphs? That... Two or three paragraphs out of today's lesson. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so today's lesson, it's lesson 91, and it's miracles are seen in the light. Uh, it basically states, it's important to remember that miracles and vision necessarily go together. This needs repeating and frequent repeating. It is a central idea in your new thought system, and the perception that it produces, the miracle is always there. Its presence is not caused by your vision. Its absence is not the result of your failure to see. It's your awareness of miracles that is affected. You will not, you will see them in light. You will not see them in the dark. Mm. To you, the light is crucial while you remain in darkness. The miracle remains unseen. Thus, you are convinced it's not there. This follows from the premises of which the darkness comes. Denial of the light leads to failure to perceive it. Failure to perceive light is to perceive darkness. The light is useless to you then, even though it's there. You cannot use it because its presence is unknown to you. And the seeming reality of the darkness makes the idea of the light meaningless. To be told what you do not see is there sounds like insanity. It's very difficult to become convinced that it's insanity not to see what is there and to see what is there is not, excuse me, and to see what is not there instead. You do not doubt that the body's eyes can see. You do not doubt the images they show you are reality. Your faith lies in the darkness, not the light. How can this be reversed? For you, it's impossible, but you are not alone in this. And he basically goes on to, to emphasize that today is supposed to be about strength and acknowledging strength, but I, I thought it really went along with this chapter, so I don't know if that I agree. gave anything. Uh, it was meaningful for me. So. <laughs> meaningful for me, too. Thank I you. Mean, I think that summarizes uh, what this whole uh, chapter has been about. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So he, he refers to the miracle there, but uh, I guess in this chapter he's referring to the, to the other individual. Uh, I guess the miracle is the the change in perception, the change in thought, 
and it must be seen with complete vision. Complete vision comes through forgiveness. So, uh, I mean, that's how I, I'd summarize this. He hasn't, he hasn't mentioned forgiveness yet, though. <laughs> It's okay. It, that's, that's okay. That's all right. You know, it's it'll, somewhere, it, it, it'll somewhere, pop somewhere up. I know around there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you feel like uh, you feel like reading uh, paragraph uh, eight, Oscar? Sure. Sure. Uh, just a second uh, before sure. you go on sure. to the next paragraph. I wanted to underscore um, number four. Also, the only meaningful contribution the healer can make is to present an example of one who direct, whose direction has been changed for him and who no longer believes in the nightmares of any kind. Okay, so you wanna know what that, you want me to kind of, kind of uh, talk about that for a little bit? Um, is that clear to everyone what he's talking about? Um, you know, to present an example. So if you want to be a, a healer, you got to be an example of a person who has already been healed. Well, I think that's what it means, right? Uh, no, I, 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 I think it. Uh, sorry, go for it. Go for it. Well, it's actually talking about reframing and see it's about seeing the perfection it's about seeing the perfection in what you actually went through now you just took a uh, radical forgiveness which talks a lot about that and so in radical forgiveness um it teaches you about and i'm just using this as an example about seeing the perfection in something that you're going through and seeing how perhaps something was actually working for you and not really against you. It was actually working for your highest good. It was actually working to bring you to that next level, that next place in your evolution. And now you're looking at the situation, not from a standpoint of a victim's eyes, but you're looking at this from a standpoint of, wow, the universe is really supporting me. Uh, my brother or sister who, I, you know, was, I felt like was, 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 was against me was, you know, their soul was really, was really for me because, you know, they actually loved me as far as they, you know, put, putting me through this trial so that I could grow and move to this next level and evolve. So that's kind of what that's actually saying, presenting an example, giving them an example situation where they can see the situation from a standpoint that it's actually for them or for their highest good. That's what it's talking about. Yeah. yeah, and, and it, it reemphasizes uh, that point that the miracle always exists. It's always uh, there. Uh, we're just not aware of it. <laughs> we just blind ourselves to it. But that's, that's, I guess I understand this book as it's not about changing the situation that you're in. It's not about changing the world. It's about seeing the world for what it really is, which is just That's an right. avenue of communication. Right. So everything is exactly the same way it is now. You just perceive it the way God does. Exactly. That's, I don't know. That's, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Anything that you go through, it's 10% the event that actually happened and 90% of how you interpreted that event. Anything. 10% of it is what actually happened. 90% of it is how I interpreted it. So I can interpret that uh, from a standpoint of a victim and I see a different world, okay? If I, test, if I, if I interpret it from a standpoint that this was necessary for my growth and evolution and it, it, it helped make me, helped mold me into the person that I am today and I honor what happened to me, that's a, a completely different perspective to be looking at uh, from a victim than from a victim standpoint. Does that make, make sense, uh, Ziva? Well, um, I see it differently, but uh, okay. that's, that's a good explanation okay. <laughs> in itself. Okay. All right. Okay. Do you want me to jump to the next section, Ziva? Or? 
Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we, we were on eight, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. one. Okay, so the therapist does not heal. He lets healing be. He can point to darkness, but he cannot bring light of himself. Okay, I read that right. For light is not of him. Yet being for him, it must also be for his patient. The Holy Spirit is the only therapist. Ooh, there he goes. <laughs> uh -huh. He makes healing clear in any, situ in any situation in which he is the guide. You can only let him fulfill his function. He needs no help for this. He will tell you exactly what to do to help anyone. He sends to you for help. And he will speak to him through you if you do not interfere. Remember that you choose the guide for helping. And the wrong choice will not help. But remember that the right one will. Trust him for his, or excuse me, trust him for help is his function. And he is of God. As you awaken other minds to the Holy Spirit through him and not yourself, you will understand that you are not obeying the laws of the world, but the laws you are obeying work. The good is what works, is a, is a sound through, excuse me, the good is what works, is a sound through insufficient statement. Only good can work. Nothing else works at all. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I like that last statement because it goes to his definition of the crucifixion, mm -hmm. which, uh, so th 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 that one I thought of today, which uh, I guess in this book, he describes it as only give love. So it's, it's, it's making that blanket statement saying that only good will work as in only give love. I, I, I don't know. I might be making a little leap there. So. <laughs> hey, it's, it's okay. I see, I see, I see what it is that you that you that you're saying. Ask me. So, thank you for reading. Anybody want to discuss that paragraph, Zeba? You have anything you want to share? Any questions? Any... Mary. Well, you know, I'm sitting here because I'm a massage therapist too, and. So when I hear therapist does not heal, I, I never felt like I was a healer. I felt like I was a channel or um, you're the vessel. That was the word I was looking for. Thank you. I feel like I'm, I am the vessel and it's really like confirmation that I can allow spirit to use me mm -hmm. and it you know not be me and not to forget that I'm the vessel don't let the ego backdoor me mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and if you <clears throat> what I found is it, if, if, if you completely move yourself out of the way or like if I move myself out of the way you know and when I say myself I'm talking about you know my agendas and and my biases and 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 and, and, and my backstory and I kind of just move that out of the way and just really just be intent and focused and just really being there for someone who just maybe they just need somebody to vent to Maybe they just, you know, they just want to express some type of frustration, you know, or whatever. Maybe they're just kind of confused and they just, hey, you know, what's your opinion on this? You know, and just, just move everything out of the way and just hear what they're saying. You'd be surprised, or I have been surprised at what has then flowed through me when I can get a lot, when I can get, when I get me out of the way, when I get those uh, uh, biases and, and agendas and all those other little things that kind of get in the way and just get those out of the way and just let me let me hear my brother let me hear my sister and see what, what what's going on 
it sounds to me like, you know, sounds to me like something I've gone through right there. I, I can kind of identify with that, you know, and then I start to, then I start to feel this compassion. I went through something or whatever. And I, and then, and now when I have this compassion, it's like, it's, it's like there's a part of me that is just like, I get it. I'm, I'm there with you, but I still see the truth in you. And so when you can do that and you're able to have that double vision, like I was talking about at the beginning of, uh, of, uh, of Course in Miracles tonight, you can kind of bridge the gap and you allow Holy Spirit to express through you and express things that, where did that come from? You know, it's like, whoa, where, where did that come from? You know, I mean, to me, this is just my own experience. Um, it has been a, 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 a wonderful, a wonderful surprise, a blessing. So I just wanted to share that. Ziba, how you doing over there? I'm listening. All right. You got any questions before we wrap up? Because you know, we got one more minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm good. You good? All right. So let's, uh, it's nine o'clock. So let's, let's pray. And... So we are grateful for a wonderfully illuminating evening of A Course in Miracles. We're grateful for the sharing of ideas and, and perspectives and understandings. And we're just truly, truly grateful for the presence of Holy Spirit this evening. And so we feel that gratitude in the name and after the nature of the indwelling, I am Christ. And so it is. Amen. Well, this was a wonderful evening. Mary, it was great to see you. And I hope we mm -hmm. see you again. Like, uh, okay. Absolutely. Next. You stuck with me now. All right, cool. Great. Next Thursday is our last Thursday for the year before we don't start again until January the 9th. So next Thursday, and then we'll be, there'll be no Course in Miracles for two weeks during the holiday season. And then we start again on January the 9th. All right. Zeba, as always, sister, it's been wonderful seeing you. And thank you for your question. Thank you. I appreciate your perspectives. Mary, again, thank you for your perspectives. Oscar, I am so grateful um, for you finding that lesson. Um, that coincided with what we were reading. Thank you so much, all of you. I am I'm truly Thank you. To, 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 to have shared this evening with you all tonight. Me too. All right. Have a good night, guys. All right, you guys. Talk good to you later. Good night. Thank all you. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right.